travel, airports, borders, and smart technologies. A professor of international relations at the School of Political Studies at the University of Ottawa, he also taught at the American University of Cairo for a span of three years. Currently, he's the editor of Security Dialogue, one of the most cited journals in international relations. He has written, edited, and contributed to nine books. His personable, notable work and contributions include Politics at the Airport, Rites of Passage, Barbarians and Civilizations in International Relations, Making Things International, Circuits in Motion, and its follow-up, Making Things International Part 2, Catalyst and Reactions. Salter's research has focused on the integration of people and passports in the spaces that passports are an integral part of the experience. Naturally, this led Salter to both an interest in researching borders and airports because checkpoints, borders, and airports are the primary sites of deployment of surveillance technologies. In his most recent work, Salter shifts the traditional IR focus away from human agents to draw attention to the multitude of connections in the non-human actants that make IR conceivable. In the introduction to Making Things International, Salter illustrates that the international, the globe, the world is made up of things, of stuff, of objects, and not simply of humans and their ideas. Things play a crucial role in the assemblage of the international. It should not be surprising that his focus from risk management at airports is now applied to the things or active agents that make the world global. While some within AR may roll their eyes at the prospect of giving agency to non-human objects, Others within academia are realizing that a humanistic perspective cannot be the only approach applied to our understanding of power and sovereignty. Salter's academic interest in airport, border security, and the things that make the world global is all connected to an argument in sitting that traditional thought paradigms within security, surveillance, and IR studies need to be unpacked, deconstructed, and reimagined. For Salter, security is far more complex and nuanced for traditional humanistic paradigms to grasp, because security cannot be understood solely as a set of speech acts, but also requires guns, tanks, drones, tear gas, badges, and fences. The analysis of this interdiction goes beyond a myopic focus of human actors. To best understand this connection between airports, borders, and the various things integrated into the experience of post-9-11 security. Speaking about Salter's academic trajectory and his published work is useful. In 2003, Salter published Rites of Passage, the Passport and International Relations, which tracked how the passport had been used from the 14th century to the 21st century as an essential tool of control and identification in the international system. Drawing from Salter's conclusion, Simone Brown in Dark Matters describes the modern international passport system as a post-World War I formation that was codified by the League of Nations in 1920 with the express purpose of securing state borders and economic trade that is deemed legitimate, restricting the movements of refugees and controlling the spread of disease. Soon after Rites of Passage was published, he sought to specifically answer how has aviation security changed in response to the September 11th attacks? This research question would lead him down a path that would show the power struggles, bureaucratic inner workings, language, and habitus of the aviation security industry. Between 2003 and 2006, Seltzer gave lectures to the Canadian Air Transport Security Authority, CATSA, executive team. In doing so, he became immersed in the field of aviation security learning the daily language, plotting the struggles between agencies and ideas, understanding the deep well of specific common sense beliefs that form the field. During his Bordeauxian field analysis, he began to see distinctions in how different countries engaged in risk management at borders and airports. For example, when highlighting the difference in the technology use between America and Europe aviation security, Salter stated that European agencies scan luggage with progressively more sophisticated equipment when alarm was detected. American agencies scanned every piece of luggage with the most sensitive equipment. With his field analysis, he came to an important conclusion for the Copenhagen School's most prominent concept of securitization. Specifically, the constructivist view that security issues can be taken out of the realm of experts and placed back into liberal democratic civil discourse 
desecuritization. Salter highlights that it is imperative to understand the field in order to be able to desecuritize it. This understanding of the field includes a focus on the inner struggles, bureaucratic intricacies, and the language used by those who occupy positions within the field. During his speeches at the security conferences, Salter spoke openly about his criticism of the often counterintuitive security practices being implemented by aviation security. For the average person, the airport and the border are easily imagined as places where security is both an active and ever-imposing function of their makeup. That said, it is tempting to be solely view borders and airports as impersonal, objective, and rational security tools, acting as efficient and necessary gates. The flaw is both thinking that security technologies are inherently justified and rational, as well as an oversimplified analysis of airports, customs, and borders as impersonal gates. Instead, Salter believes that it is better to speak of border function than lines in the sand. Furthermore, in his analysis, the airport is neither a smooth transit zone nor simply a gate into the nation, but a complex of private and public agencies wrestling with an impossible task of perfect security and perfect mobility. Borders are much more than just an entryway or gate into a sovereign state. After 9-11, the semi-impermeable membrane of a state's sovereignty represented by the border became an immense source of insecurity. In researching what happened to the border after 9-11, Salter concluded that all visitors now have greatly reduced rights. Borders and airports currently manifest as what Giorgio Agamben conceptualized as states of exception, where an individual's political and civil rights are nullified. In these states of exception, apparent at both the border, but more particularly the airport, individuals engage in a new ritualized security practice. Within this multifaceted environment, dominated by doctrines of risk management and customer service, the confessionary complex facilitates the self-policing of transiting individuals and the overlapping and obscured lines of authority subtly restrict the possibility of resistance. This confessionary complex is a Foucauldian concept that speaks to a panoptic self-surveillance brought about by the security practices of the post-9-11 airport. The security paradigm in the airport but also increasingly throughout Western society, has shifted from an innocent until proven guilty to a guilty until proven innocent framework. A framework that is obsessed with characterizing and labeling friend from foe. Salter argues that this transition from undesirable visitors to high risk marks a significant shift in the security paradigm. When an individual or a group is defined as high risk, this actually means that there is a sufficient lack of precise knowledge, suggesting only suspicion based on statistics, sociology, and narratives. This whole process creates a self-perpetuating cycle of insecurity that only leads to more people being defined as high risk, and therefore increased power is given to both bureaucratic and police structures of control. In professional forums, Salter would not just criticize the sociological implications of these states of exception and the labeling of high-risk travelers, but also the effectiveness of these overly securitized spaces claims to possess. One can clearly see that security has changed post 9-11, but how does one even begin to quantify its success or failure? The effectiveness and the supposed quantification of the effectiveness of airport security is Salter's prominent criticism of the post 9-11 airport. Meaning, how exactly does one measure the success or failure rate of aviation security? What exactly does it mean to make a space safer, and as compared to what? Furthermore, in his analysis, Salter states that such practices in security do not really have a tangible effect. For example, Salter believes that an examination at the border cannot deter or detect a motivated criminal. Interviewing an individual about their intent, past affiliations, and work experience cannot deter an individual from carrying out an act of terrorism. Even the technology and the processes that are so often cited as essential are not adding to national security. In fact, the disturbing reality is that post 9-11 security technology and processes have not added to a tangible increase in security as Salter thought would happen. For example, Michael Goldstein writing for Forbes in 2017 reported on the TSA's failure rate and noted that undercover investigators working for the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General managed to sneak fake guns, knives, and explosives through checkpoints 70% of the time. The good news is 
that this is an improvement from previous rates of failures.